Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, yesterday, it was a Women's Day. Now, you know, I am not against for sure to have something called Women's Day. But I don't know how much is useful this day is. However, these days there is Father Day, Women Day, Valentine Day. There is many days. But most of those days is either commercial or to present something. Let us say either for commercial agenda or for political agenda. Now everybody have the right to present himself and to speak of himself, the women or the men. But for me, I don't really like the idea of having uh, something just, uh, I mean, we as a human, we should always defend each other, uh, uh, each other rights. And men should be part of any movement to protect women's rights not only it's a women day let us say i prefer to have a human day now women day yesterday the women in turkey they went by tens of thousands marched in the streets in almost every city but in uh, istanbul when the prayer of islam started the women there, they start making an insult noise to, this is the video actually, I post a link for it under the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the comment, you can watch it. I'm not going to play it because, uh, uh, you know, this is not my video, I cannot play it in my channel. So when they start hearing the prayer of the Adhan, which means calling to, the, to pray for Muslims, there was tens of thousands of women, they start saying, ooh, ooh, and they start whistling. And Erdogan, uh, he made a speech about those women insulting Islam, how they are disgraced, how they are filthy, how they are trashy, how they are garbage, that they are the trash of Turkey. Now, you see this idiot, Erdogan, he did not notice that he did fool those people and he came to an election and they voted for him because one day he told them, I'm not going to bring religion upon you. Even he signed a paper saying, I will not involve Islam in any party I establish. And this is always what Muslims they do. And this is what Muhammad he did. Tactique, stage by stage, first we fool them. We make them, we, we get in the office. And after we get in the office, then you cannot take us off. And now those people in Turkey, they felt really what happened exactly to them. So their enmity into Islam became bigger and bigger. To the point, they cannot even accept to hear the shouting of the prayer of Allah, even though they are considered themselves supposedly as Muslims but obviously they don't want to be Muslims and they hate to be Muslims if you watch the video you will see how they were so upset and by the way how ugly is the guy who is praying I mean his voice is really ugly again the video the link is down there you can click it and you can see yourself so the second the prayer started those women they start shouting and screaming and then when Erdogan, he made a speech about women who did that, uh, he said everything the prophet he said about them is true. Everything the prophet he said about them is true. Uh, no, I don't speak Turkish. Somebody told me that this is what he said. Uh, he said they are disrespectful. They are garbage they are whatever I don't know like you know this is what like he's insulting supposedly he's insulting back because they insulted his God now we need always to understand the background of Islam when it's come to women women in Islam are not even second-hand citizen or third-hand citizen 
women in Islam as described by Muhammad the prophet of Erdogan the best man of Erdogan as she is the devil Muhammad he said that women she advance and retires in the shape of the devil so Erdogan his speech he was making a comment about women saying what you expect of them I mean the prophet he said the truth about them they are the devil they are women here we notice and we remember that when Muslims they say to us like we have 1.5 billion Muslim what, what they count exactly they count everybody is born in Turkey as a Muslim everyone is born in Iran as a Muslim but is that really resemble the reality the reality I saw in this video is telling me that there is a huge number I don't know maybe 60 percent maybe maybe 50 percent I'm not sure what is the percentage of people who don't believe in Islam maybe even more we do not know you know we uh, the Turkish now they live in 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 a dictator state where anybody speak against Erdogan he go to jail this guy in one day he released 80,000 people of their jobs from the government in one day I mean how in the world journalists are in jail police officers in jail nurses doctors journalists uh, even the guy who cleaned the garbage in the street they if, they if they suspect that he is against Erdogan they put him in jail so Turkey today became the biggest jail exist in that area but yet Erdogan always he speak about the favor of Allah and how Allah will play, will bring uh, justice so that justice in Islam is if you don't speak with Islam the justice of Islam we are going to oppress oppress you and we are going to put you in jail and if you are a woman we are going to humiliate you actually I saw the videos how the police are beating the women I mean it's a women day and they are marching in the street why the police is even there are they breaking windows no are they burning cars no so why the police are in the street and they are beating the women I could not really I mean look at this I don't know if you can see it clear without playing the video why even the police is in the street why Erdogan he put the police in the street in a women day what's exactly happening there they are women and they are not burning cars they are not shouting Allahu Akbar we want to kill you and look what happened one of you who is who live in Turkey uh, he posted in the text and he said that today thousands of from the party of Erdogan which means from the Mujahideen you know the, the one who support jihad against those who don't believe in Allah they marched in the street in the capital of Turkey in Ankara and they were shouting Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar and they were threatening those women who did uh, supposedly insulted Islam so you can say that uh, Turkish society is very much di divided and always the minority as long as they are terrorists they can oppress the majority you see if we have a street have let us say uh, 2,000 family and we have only 20 criminals 2,000 versus 20 criminals I assure you that the 20 they will scare the hell of the 2,000 family because everybody will say it's not my business I don't want to get killed enter one day people they cannot take it no more and they go in what is called revolution and I believe Turkey is going to face that sooner or later the revolution is going to happen and uh, uh, this is the only way to get rid of the Islamists you see they, they fabricate election like first time Erdogan maybe he won it was by true election but not the second and not the third and not the fourth this guy he will never leave that's it those people wherever they take a place they don't leave unless you have a revolution in Iran uh, they have an election uh, every four years but guess what the election 
it is the mullahs who decide who can go for election and all the election is corrupt and Turkey is no different since the Turkish Islamic party of Erdogan took over there's no real election ever even in the past election when uh, everybody was expecting Erdogan to lose because simply I mean economy is so bad jobs money businesses things is messed up yet again Erdogan he won the election how that can happen simply because Allah is in his side you know obviously <laughs> because the corruption they control and they corrupt the election and all the opposition parties at that time they said this is a big scam and there's no true election happening but that's it as I said they enter they enter from the door you cannot let them leave until you kick them out from the window and I believe that Turkey is going to suffer a very bad uh, uh, time because of Erdogan look what Erdogan he did he thought he can uh, take over Syria so he sponsored the Muslims Brotherhood his party in Syria hoping in a few weeks Syria will be under his command so and at that time if you remember if we go uh, just to give you a little bit of the plan of Erdogan Erdogan is not a local guy you know the Muslim Brotherhood they are not local people they are international And their plan is take over the world not even the Middle East if we go in the map here and I will put the map on the screen for you so you can see with me what I'm talking about Erdogan is a Muslim Brotherhood now somebody will say they have different name for their party yeah the Muslim Brotherhood they have many names for their party but all of them they have one they are one party this is why Muslim Brotherhood in Turkey Erdogan he hate very much that the the, uh, the Egyptian regime because they are anti Muslim Brotherhood but look what happened eight years ago Uh, Erdogan he sponsor the war in Syria big deal and he opened his borders to all kind of terrorists including Isis to come from around the earth to come into Syria hoping that in a few weeks they will be able to destroy the government in there and then he was sure because the biggest party in the ground which is organized not by population but by organization is the Muslim Brotherhood uh, party he was sure that the Muslim Brotherhood will take over Damascus and will take over Syria and if this happened that's mean and in uh, the, the same time in case you don't remember if you remember the Muslim Brotherhood they took over Egypt government so now Turkey is Muslim Brotherhood if Erdogan he can change Syria into Muslim Brotherhood Jordan will be next which is very easy to do actually and that will make an empire of the Muslim Brotherhood rounding all the way around the Mediterranean and actually if you remember when the uh, USA ambassador he was killed in Libya the reason he was killed because Obama he was in total agreement with the Turkish president because Obama I believe strongly he is a Muslim Brotherhood too uh, Hillary Clinton she met only one person in Libya only one person after what it's called revolution and that was the head of the Muslim Brotherhood in Libya so the plan was with the help of Obama Turkey Syria Jordan Egypt Libya and actually in case you do not know that even Tunisia the Muslim Brotherhood they were able to control it so the plan was very simple 
they will establish an empire from Europe, from Istanbul, from here, all the way here, surrounding Israel from all direction, all the way to Morocco. And for sure, Morocco is going to be next. In the same time, the Muslim Brotherhood, they were planning to take over Saudi Arabia and almost actually they succeed. But the Saudi intelligence, they were able to discover about them and them and the Emirati government, they start arresting the Muslim Brotherhood and they announce them to be a terrorist organization. So the plan was that we take over Emirat, we take over Saudi Arabia, All of Egypt and Israel is surrounded from every place and finally we have the Caliphate state with a huge part of land as you see in the screen all of this was going to be under the control of Muslim Brotherhood and for sure Qatar is the money back of the Muslim Brotherhood the Prince of Qatar is a big well-known uh, Muslim Brotherhood member and leader so the plan was very huge very big the dream was beyond imagination but what happened it was totally different from what they want in less than a year after the Muslim Brotherhood took over Egypt people they went in the street and they throw the Muslim Brotherhood government in, in, into 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 jail they arrested tens of thousands of them and suddenly Erdogan he lost his dream to control over Egypt and to be the caliphate and then the Russian they came and they involved in Syria so the dream to control Syria disappeared by the involvement of the Russian so now his empire will not be able to con to connect and then because of his you know non-stable government and his etc the plan of the Muslim Brotherhood to take over Jordan you know became a dream and the Jordanian government they start putting a lot of pressure on them and then because of the Saudi they start arresting tens of thousands and kick them out of Emirat of Bahrain of of Emirat of uh, 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 Saudi Arabia uh, uh, the dream is disappearing again and again and then because Emirat, because of what happened, the Emirati and the Saudi did notice that the Muslim Brotherhood, they have a plan to take over their country, as we said here. They start supporting the opposition of the Muslim Brotherhood in Libya. So they start supporting someone like Haftar. I don't know if you heard of him. He is an enemy of the Muslim Brotherhood. And now actually Haftar is controlling a huge part of Libya and actually soon he is going to enter the capital and he control it which means the dream of Erdogan to control Libya disappear and then not only that Tunisia itself is switched upside down and instead of having an Islamic party for the first time ever in Tunisia women she have equal right as a Muslim man which means she can inherit the same and a man he cannot marry for women and a man he cannot beat his wife so the dream of Erdogan disappear from the map country after country plan after plan and now the dream of Erdogan will disappear in Turkey itself count my words and let us see how long the party of Erdogan is going to survive one tweet from Trump made Turkey lose almost 30 percent of their income just one tweet so if Trump, he tweet 10 times, what is going to be left? Turkey economy is collapsing. And because of what he did in Syria, this, uh, this madman, he destroyed heavily his economy because Syria was an open border to import and to export. But mostly to export from Turkey into other countries but now Syria is not a friendly country no more they became their enemies and now they are 
the government of Syria are controlled by the enemy of Turkey, the Assad. And because Erdogan is a stupid, and from the first day he came, he started speaking against Israel. So he lost another support to Turkey. Turkish economy is heavily involved with the Israeli money. So from the first day, he starts saying that he saw a dream, that Allah spoke to him, and he is going to, to, to take over Jerusalem, which means he is going to take over Israel, and he will control Israel, and he will make it again an Islamic state. And since then, his relationship with the Israeli is, is very bad. So he lost everybody. This guy, this is why Erdogan in the last uh, eight years, he tried to scam the European by having borders with Europe and saying to them, if you don't pay me billions of dollars, I'm going to open the refugee borders and they will, they will, they will flood you. So the refugee became a business. Turkey took a lot of refugee, not because they like them, but because it was a huge business to make a lot of a profit from it. So we receive from uh, Europe, like last year, let's say a twenty billion dollar. We give the refugees five hundred million, and the rest we go in the pocket of Erdogan and his government to survive. So Erdogan economy is really in a bad shape. Tourism in a bad shape. Uh, money, income. I mean, if I show you what's happening there, there is a, you know, uh, uh, Erdogan. He was able in a certain time to make a lot of Arab from rich countries like Emirates, Bahrain, Qatar, uh, to to invest heavily to build like um, new cities, like you know, uh, houses, real estate business. And now those real estate business are ghost town. If you can go right now, search in, in Turkey, ghost town, Turkey, you will find how scary it is, the situation. They invested hundreds of millions of dollars, many companies, and now nobody can buy it and nobody will buy it. You can get you can get a house now in Turkey for a very cheap price, especially in those areas where nobody want to, I mean, they are brand new. They are beautiful villas. But the economy is so bad. So I believe that Turkey is going to face a big change sooner or later. Economy is bad. They have no more friends. They are enemy to everybody. And I'm talking about Erdogan himself, not the Turkish. As I said, I believe most of the Turkish, they oppose this man, big deal. But as you know, the Muslim parties, they will not leave a place unless you kick them out. And that is going to happen, I believe, is going to happen by a revolution violence. The coming election, uh, maybe two years from now, I'm not sure. I don't know how many of you will remember what I'm saying today. You will see millions of Turkish going in what it's called, I believe it's going to be a revolution. The The... The currency of Turkey is not even equal to the toilet paper. Uh, the change of prices is beyond imagination. You go to the market in the morning to buy a chicken, you come afternoon, the price is three times more. The salary does not match the cost of life. Uh, he made the Qatar, you know, Qatar is a very rich country. So Qatar, they did their, their best to keep Erdogan in the office by uh, pumping a lot of money, but Turkey cannot live by the money coming from Qatar because at the end of the day, it's too much money. We cannot fix it. This guy, he destroyed truly the economy. Uh, Erdogan, uh, uh, you know, he decided he want to build a manufacturer for weapon, but nobody buying his weapon because nobody buy Turkish weapon. You know, I remember I have a friend he bought uh, uh, a Turkish gun, you know, he shot, I think, 11 bullets and the gun exploded in his face and he spent like two months in the hospital. Turkish weapon is very well known to be scrap, garbage. Nobody will buy it and nobody is convinced with it. So this guy really, he lost a great opportunity. Look how in the beginning when he took over, he was really successful to be, he was smart. He made a good relationship with Syria. 
and that opened the market for all the Turkish to flood Syria here with a lot of product and that make the product go to Jordan go to Iraq go to Saudi Arabia go to everywhere Syria is the gate for many countries uh, and because Iraq is not really secure to import directly especially the one who controlled the borders with Turkey most of them they are Kurdish so it was the only gate maybe to go in this direction even to Africa and by closing that gate Turkey he lost a lot of money uh, this guy he brought nothing but disasters to Turkey and let us see you see one day I was having a I was doing a radio show with the brother Osama Dagdok. I don't know how many of you know him. And uh, actually, uh, still the show is still there. You know, you, you can go watch it. Actually, somebody sent me uh, sent me a message says to me, "I don't believe that you said at that time that Obama will not leave unless he establish an Islamic state." I said that in that show that Obama will not leave until he establish an Islamic state. At that time, nobody heard of this term Islamic state. You know. So Osama was upset because he's an Egyptian, as you know. And the Muslim Brotherhood at that day, they won the election here. And this is what I said to him. I said to him, this is not, this is the beginning. And Obama will not leave until he established an Islamic state. But I believe in less than a year or two maximum, those, actually, no, I said to him, oh, hold on. I said to him first, I believe this is a good news. Osama, he said, how you say that? I said, because the best way to show Muslims that Islam is a, is, a, is a scrap, is garbage, is to bring Islam upon them as government. And then they will hate it. And then in less than a year, you will see that the same Muslims, they voted for those Muslims to be in their charge, is the same Muslims will kick them out. And less than a year, guys, 30 million Egyptians, they went in the street and they took off the Muslim Brotherhood Party and not only they took them off now they became wanted everywhere less than a year and now if you are a Muslim Brotherhood in 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 Egypt you are a terrorist actually they are terrorists there are criminals they involve killing a lot of people you know uh, uh, just yesterday militia they they deliver uh, they send back six uh, members of the Muslim Brotherhood from their country back to Egypt because they are involved in killing uh, many innocent people so Erdogan plan destroyed by stupid mistakes done by the Muslim Brotherhood and those stupid mistakes is very simple it's like you know you know like somebody is so hungry he want to eat and he cannot wait for the food to be ready that's what happened exactly to the Muslim Brotherhood Muslim Brotherhood, they were so successful to the point, imagine eight ministers in Emirat, I think out of 16, 17, something like that, I forgot. They were Muslim Brotherhood. Imagine how much they controlled the government, including the education ministry. They almost took over the country. But they start moving so fast, and that make them exposed and then the prince of uh, of emirat uh, uh, his his intelligence they discover that there's a cube is going to happen against him same what happened in saudi arabia they were spreading like fire everywhere giving brochure books and the saudi they are not stupid so both government was behind of a lot of collapse of the Muslim Brotherhood in the Middle East. And imagine Muslim Brotherhood is considered as a terrorist party by many Islamic government, but not by USA. Until now. Until now, Obama, sorry, Trump, he did not announce them to be terrorist. For a very simple reason, because Trump is no better than Obama in many ways. He is just a businessman. He cared for money. Qatar is a rich country which Trump he need and in order to consider Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization that's mean he have to arrest the Prince of Qatar for he is number one sponsor for the Muslim Brotherhood in the world 
you see like I voted for Trump but not because Trump is really the best but Trump is the best between donkeys like I to say at least he is not liberal who will bring uh, judges to uh, the more important for me actually I, I voted for him because of the Supreme Court he promised he will bring conservative Christians to the Supreme Court otherwise I believe that Trump he is too much other copy of many other president before him you know all what he cared for if you remember Trump he went in this uh, one day in the White House and he said uh, uh, the Prince of Qatar he have to stop sp sponsoring the terrorist okay a week after Trump he signed a deal of selling more than 30 airplanes to Qatar a week before you say he is a terrorist a week after you give him 30 airplane you know what I mean so all what he is doing he was just forcing them to give money to America you know buy from us we will shut our mouth spend money and this is exactly what happened the money start coming like rain and Qatar start buying weapon they don't even need just to silence Trump and okay leave us alone Uh, Middle East always is corrupt, and this is nothing new. And you know, I'm came from there. Even even the grocery guy is a corrupt guy. Uh, even the gas station you buy, you go to buy gas, you find half of your tank is water. I mean, you go there, you will not believe it. What you will see, you know, uh, many people they have an idea. If you live between people, they speak too much about God, and I'm speaking about what I my experience in, in between Muslims. You think you will have a better society. I never saw a corrupt society as the society where we lived in the Middle East. You go to the grocery store to buy, or the, uh, the vegetable guy, we don't have really, like, you know, they are separated. You go to buy tomato, as an example. He don't allow you to pick up the tomato by yourself. No, you have to tell him how many kilos you want, and he pick it up for you. He pick up all the garbage he have of the tomato he went through in the garbage, he put it in the bottom of the case, and then in the top he put for you three or four, which is look good or good to eat. You go home, you find that half of what you paid for is garbage. You go to the butcher to buy beef, you find later that it is a donkey meat. You go, you go to the judge. You go to the judge. You know, you go to court. The one who pay more is the one who will win. It's not who is right, who is who is not. You know. I know a story where a th where a thief they are released and the owner of the house he was jailed because the thief they paid more they have more money. So, uh, uh, you know, people who do not live there they have different explanation and different understanding, especially those who they are let us say American uh, rich people who live there because you know the, you are isolated you don't speak the language you do not know them and they treat you differently. You know, if you ask a person, as an example, about Emirat, if we ask a person who is a British, what do you think about Emirat? He will say, Emirat is fun, I like it, I lived there for many years, I made a lot of money. If you ask the same question to someone who is an Indian, what he will say? It is horrible. They discriminate me. They insult me. I was working almost for nothing. I am no one there. If you are a British citizen and you work in Dubai and you have a contract with a company, they give you an apartment, good salary, etc. If you are an Indian, they put 30, 40 people in the top of each other in shelves. You know shelves? Honest to God in shelves. And they treat you like, like you know, you're, they don't treat you even like a human being. Go and read the report about what they are doing to poor employees from India or Philippines or Bangladesh and Qatar. Go and see slavery. People get killed. I mean, there's a guy in Saudi Arabia. He uh, he, he 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 put his employees in cage in, in the in the in the cage because he was upset for I don't know what uh, what team they lost the the, the game. So. You go there, they, it's, it's an enslavery land. But if you ask a person who is coming from the West about his experience with Qatar, he will say, I like it, I have a lot of money. 
but because you have a citizenship which protect you they don't treat you the same I saw many of those naive you know American bridge they say no it's good I was there you know but the fact it is the hell of a place you want to see how it is go back and come back as an Indian citizen or Indonesian citizen in Saudi Arabia more than a thousand and two hundred women female get killed and nobody knows until now what they are they are in one year 1200 Indonesian made get killed in one year and you believe it or not not a single case the police was able to find who is the killer have you ever heard of a police like this a thousand and 200 cases look what they do to them they bring those poor Indonesian women from Indonesia you come you know people want to work I mean people are poor they want to work she, you know a person who's willing to work as a maid obviously he, he needs a job and nothing wrong with working but when they bring you to Saudi Arabia the first job you will do is to be the sex slave of every male in the house and not only that they might even bury you exchange you like and I have a I have Indonesian maid in my house and you have a Filipino maid in your house hey Muhammad what about I give you my for five days you give me yours just for fun and for sex and then after some time many men sleep with this woman let us say they are raping her they are not sleeping with her she got a bread net and now they have a problem because this is not allowed in, in Saudi Arabia big big problem and now she might report them to the embassy so what they do they kill the women and they throw her in a desert do you know how big the desert of Saudi Arabia is use your imagination Saudi Arabia is almost a million kilometer big a million kilometer So they kill her and they dump her in the desert. And who is going to find you? And if they find you after maybe a year or two, you will be bones. And who is going to be? And look what they do. After they kill you and they throw you in the desert, they go to the police. They say, our mate, she ran away. She stole our jewelries. Maybe I think we she ran with her boyfriend. She was texting somebody. The police were right down. And the police, they knew they are they are the same. So they kill the poor woman and they dump her in the desert and 1200 I don't know if any of you search it in Google you can search it I'm not making things up to the point Indonesia uh, uh, be caught Saudi Arabia they will never allow any female to go to Saudi Arabia anymore to work as a maid because there's no way a thousand and two hundred cases you cannot find even one killer So, you know, the more you know about the, those countries, the more you see that the image they show they show you, like, you know, lately they start talking about what happened to the, uh, you remember the journalist, they call him, the fact he's a terrorist, he's not a journalist, he's the Muslim Brotherhood too. Do you remember Khashoggi, Jamal Khashoggi, the guy who was butchered in the embassy? But this is just an example. I mean, they butcher, they, they, they butcher people everywhere. But what happened that this one was exposed? But how many, how many thousands and thousands of people get butchered and nobody knows about them? It happened that this guy he worked in an American uh, newspapers and it's a very big one and they, they they promote the news and Qatar was behind him too. Otherwise, if it's you or me, uh, you will disappear. Nobody will know about you. Not only he was killed, they butchered him. They took him. They, until now, they cannot find his remain because they made him shish kebab, literally. They made him. They made him, you know, ground beef. All those countries are the same, and you notice that all of them they are very Islamic. 
the more Islamic the country is the more no freedom it is there see the reason until now people in Turkey they can go and they can march in the street because Muslim really did not take over the country yet yes Erdogan he controlled the country as a Muslim party but still the majority of people they are not really under his command and they don't believe in Allah and they don't want to be Muslims always you know we we learn how to like uh, to to uh, let us say to believe in news we hear it in a TV but most of TVs they don't really give you news they give you opinion like now I'm giving you opinion I'm not just report, reporting a news I'm giving you my opinion but there's a difference between a news agency which should supposedly not should should not give an opinion because they are supposed to news agency their job is to report the news they don't do that they promote all of them they promote a, 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 like an agenda CNN have an agenda Fox News have an agenda everybody have an agenda and the news change based on the agenda if Trump said something the title in CNN will be different from the same incident in Fox News the same story different titles why because both have different agenda and both are liars Uh, to make it simple like you know let us say uh, I am an Arab and I was driving my car and I hit a dog I hit a dog okay now if if somebody want to play a hatred game against me because I'm an Arab he will say an Arab guy he killed an American dog but that's not what happened I did not kill an American dog I killed a dog and by accident so by changing the title you make people have a their own like different reception already for what they what they are going to read you know what i mean just by changing the title people they don't really read the news they read the title so we have to be careful about what we read and who is saying that to us like you know in my phone i have an app uh, which have all the opposition's uh, news agencies, which mean, like, you know, every agency speak about against, like, in, especially in the Middle East. So in order to, to receive a correct news, I have the agencies who speak against each other because they expose each other. And then you have to filter yourself, where is the truth? Otherwise, nobody will tell you the truth. But what happened in the street is the truth. You see, when when liberals they went in the street when uh, Trump he was elected and they start burning cars. That is the truth. Is not what CNN says. They speak about hatred. That is hatred. A guy he won the election. Why you are burning cars? Why you are breaking windows? I mean, what this guy he have a have a store have to do with the Trump? what my car to do with the Trump I mean you are angry from Trump you burn my car that is hatred that is that is filth but in the news there are people that report to you that people are angry from Trump but the fact this their anger have nothing to do with the Trump because you are not even attacking Trump you are burning the cars of people since when if I am angry from Obama I can express my anger from Obama by burning your car what about I burn my car Okay, you want to show us that you're angry by burning cars? Burn your car. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, look at this guy here saying, a properly uh, CP was a translator and he got given citizenship because of that. That is the most funny thing ever I heard. Since when, if you are a translator, you can get a citizenship. I have somebody is looking for... You want to get citizenship? Can you get me the, the, the how you can get that? Funny people, properly, properly. Yeah, this is a this is CNN now. You know the the problem in this in in this uh, uh, society we live in, we did not learn how to read 
what is between our hands. The same when we read Quran to the Muslims. Muslims, they read the same verse every day, but they don't see what I see. Because we did not learn how to analyze words and, and, and history and facts and what's happening. Everyone, he want to think about, you know, things happen in his own way. It, it's just like a news. It's not a news. Like, you know, many of you believe in the global warming, right? And everybody is laughing at uh, Trump because of the global warming. My friend, it is proven that there is many fabrication about the global warming to make money, to collect donation. There's, there's a huge institute. They live from the idea of a global warming. There is people that are making tons of money just from a global warming idea. And nobody can stop the global warming, even if it's true. One volcano is going to increase the carbon in the air more than a millions of cars for the coming 20 years. Just one volcano. And that is a normal cycle. You know, when we have the ice age, according to the science, they say ice age millions of years ago. There was a cars at that time. I mean, what's, this is silly, right? So it's a nature, and nobody can stop the nature from doing what it's need to do. The, the earth balance itself. And they want to fool you, and they want to make you believe that you are the one who is changing the atmosphere. Like, you know, what's his name? Uh, El Gore. El Gore. He was going from country to country to teach you how to save the earth. He was teaching them that if you leave the bathroom, you have to turn off the light. But Al Gore, to go to come to you and do the seminar he just did, he took his own jet, which means what he burned in his airplane to come to you, a, a whole airplane just for one guy. How much gas he spent? And yet he is lecturing me about turning off the light when I leave the room. <laughs> you know what I mean? His house is the biggest villa ever you can imagine. The light never turned off, the security lights. And yet he is giving us a speech about turning off the light of the bathroom. If you go and see those liberals, they are t talking about going green, but all of them, they are driving the most expensive four-wheel drive. How you want to go green? If you, if you yourself, you have, uh, you have the most expensive burning gas cars. They want you, you, you to drive a car like a donkey, but they, they want to they 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 drive and uh, uh, they want to have an airplane. But because you are a, a person who be, is driven by ideas, which is not your ideas, and you became a victim of those ideas, that's it. You believe Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is going to have a war against drugs. How have you ever heard of somebody want to go for election? He want to have war. He want to stop the war against drugs. What do you want? You want us to go drive cars and we are high? Do you know how many people die every day because of drugs? Have you ever heard that somebody going for election to be a president, he says, we should stop war against drugs. I never heard of this before. So what do you want? You want a teacher, he go to school teaching children, and then he is high, he starts raping kids? He's high. What do you want? The Pentagon, all of them, they are in drugs? What about the president himself in drugs? And then he hit the nuclear uh, uh, weapon. <laughs> I mean, stupidity. And still there's people who want to vote for him and they love him very much. But how we arrive to such a time and such a moment that even such a guy with an obvious stupidity, still people support him because we have a generation, they learn that stupidity is being smart. Drugs is good. I mean, those who they are against drugs, they are stupid. This is what they believe. Now, the funny they speak about science, they speak about the global warming. But when it's come to science, they don't want to. They don't want the uh, science to be involved with the drugs, 
I mean, isn't it a science proved that drugs kill you? Isn't it science says that drugs will destroy your brain, your cells' brain? Isn't it science says that if you take a drugs, you get so old so fast and you die so fast? They don't want science. When they want science is required, when they want science is not. Uh, so always don't take what those people say to you for granted use your brain you are a human being who is being given a gift use it and don't join a crowd just because it's a crowd there is something it's called the theory of the cattle I don't know if you know what does that mean like if you see a group of people gathering you gather with them because you became curious just because they are a group of people you gather if you walk in the street now and you see 10 people looking at the sky you start looking too but maybe they are making fun of you just because they are looking you look a human being sometimes have the nature of a fish like you see the sardine they go in a huge group even they knew that this is a big risk because that will bring the big fish and the big fish will open their mouth and they will swallow a thousand of them in one head why you walk together that will not make you stronger still you are a small fish and you can't attack anyone and you will never attack anyone so why you walk together what is this unity what this is stupid unity is about and this is what happened to a human being sometime he liked to follow a group and some people they think if the group, if a huge group believe in something, it means true. Just because they are huge in number. Like, how many times you heard Muslims saying, if Islam is not true, how come we are 1.4 billion? Well, you want to see how many Muslims left out of the 4.4 billion? Just yesterday, there's a guy, he was jailed in Malaysia for 10 years for posting one word against Islam. 10 years this is how you make people stay under Islam and now anyone he dare to open his mouth he will think about it 100 time 10 years for posting a post in a Twitter or he did not even say anything he said, he said I don't believe in this that's it I don't believe in this 10 years This is how they are a group and bigger group because there's nobody there. Terrorism. Give them freedom, the same as what happened to those women in the street. And they start shouting at Islam and they don't want Islam no more. They were making fun of the prayer of Allah in the heart of Turkey. So don't go by their propaganda and don't go by their what they say to you in the news. News, they pick up their cherries, whatever is, is sweet for them is sweet and whatever is sore is sore. Depend in the person who is in charge of the news desk. Once I called the CNN and I said to them, I have a news for you if you can publish it, please. They said, uh, what news? I said, uh, I, I, got, I got a video uh, from a Jazeera TV saying 16,000 Muslims leave Islam a day. Uh, they said to me, let us transfer you to the finance department. I said, what finance department? What for? They said, because you, you have to pay for it if you want to publish it. I said, well, I saw in your CNN every week, it says Islam is the fastest growing religion. Every week for more than a year. CNN every day. I mean, as, as if there is nothing important in the world except saying that Islam is the fastest growing. We found that this was paid. They said to me, if you want to publish it, we will send you to the finance department. You can publish it. But this will be your news. That's why you have to pay for it. So Islam is the fastest growing religion in CNN was nothing but a hawkers paid by somebody. Obviously a Muslim. Just to make you believe that this is true. And then you read, you see CNN, you see, oh, Islam is the first, it says there in CNN.
Islam foundation in the Bible my friend Islam has no foundation so don't mix the Bible with Islam Islam has no foundation Islam is a collection of stupidity Muhammad he took some stories from the Christian some story from the Jews some st stories from the Z uh, Yazidi the Sabian some story from the Ethiopian some stories from the Greek and he put it all in the Quran what foundation Not everything you hear is it true and not everything is it true you hear Mostly actually the truth is going to be always covered Always It's not for the benefit to say to you really what's happening uh, Anyway I just wanted to share this is a story with you and uh, who want to remind me in a year or let us say uh, the election when when they came in election in Turkey anyone knows for Erdogan the presidency count my words and see what will happen in Turkey in the coming election Erdogan he will he will corrupt the election and he will win again and the revolution will happen because this guy he will never leave not even for the coming century election after election it doesn't matter how my election he will win forever unless the Turkish they go and make a revolution you bring a Muslim party to the office they never leave never leave unless you go in war And the one who will decide that the, the fate of this Muslim party in Turkey, which are obviously collapsing, is money. Money. If Erdogan was able to fix it before the date, maybe he got succeed by having a true election. But I don't think people, they will. Uh, yeah, Erdogan will never leave. Not, not only Erdogan, any Islamic parties. Look at Iran. The Iranian regime, the Islamic regime, they came as a revolution. Supposedly, we will make election. A few people want us, we will stay. You don't want us, we will leave. And imagine, since 40 years until now, they never left. That's it. They are the only party. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a party? There's no other party except his party. And the funny, they make election every, every few years. But this election, the only members they can go for election is the member of their party. It's like communist. Okay, we will make election for you. It's a it's a fake election. Like, okay, uh, uh, you can elect either a Christian prince, he is a communist. And this guy, Abdul, he is a communist. And this guy, he is a communist. And this guy is a communist. Choose one of the communists. And this is what they do. And then they fool us and they say, we have election. And we have a president, he won the election. And not only that, the president in Iran, he is not really the president. The one in charge is the big mullah. The higher president, he is the puppet. Like in the front of the TV, he is the president. He is the one who makes decision. But the fact, the one who makes decision is the big mullah, the Khamenei. And the funny, a Muslim saying to us in text, I am a Muslim and Islam mean peace. We, in which language Islam mean peace? Islam is not the word, the word peace in Arabic is salam. Islam is to surrender. Here we go, fake news. Islam is totally the opposite of the word peace. It is the opposite. Surrender or die. This is what Islam means. The word peace in Arabic is salam, coming from the Aramaic, coming from the Hebrew. In, in Hebrew, you say shalom. So don't lie to yourself. Islam is not Salam. Islam is to surrender, which means Muhammad said, and let me show you. Convert, you will be safe. Safe from what? From killing you. You want to see how Islam means peace according to you? Get you busted in a second.
No, he will say to me, this is a fake hadith. Read with me. Aslim, Taslam. Aslim, Taslam. Let's see in the translation. Uh, here we go. Do you see it, guys? Enter Islam, you will be safe. That's exactly what it says in Arabic. Enter Islam, you will be safe. Which means convert or die. <clears throat> That is a true meaning of Islam. Islam is not peace and never been have nothing to do with the word peace. It's totally written different written word. But because they knew that you do not know, I mean, you don't know Arabic, we can fool you. My interpretation is wrong. Okay, let me show you your private interpretation. Is that okay? Guys, is that okay if I show you show him the the private interpretation? Okay. I think now you will say your private interpretation is wrong. Let's see what you will say now. What do you say about that? Tell me wrong, please. What is the Abdul? What is the Abdul who is saying your interpretation is wrong? Show me your uh, opinion. Are you there, Abdul? Islam means peace, right? I mean, obviously, it is. Look at this. Muslims, Muhammad is teaching the Muslim to be fascist. What the fascism is about? We are the best of mankind. And the rest are animals. So what we would do with them? We bring them and we put chains around their necks. Do you see it? Who is the best of mankind? The Muslims. Why? Because they put a chain around your neck and they bring you as a slave. What do you want more? Islam means peace. Muhammad, you want, to, you want you to enter paradise with a chain around your neck. How? By forcing you to Islam. He will conquer you. He will put a chain around your neck and he will not let you get out of the chain like a dog unless you convert to Islam. And this is how he enter you into heaven. Islam means peace. And now he will say Muhammad is a liar. Say, say that. Say it. Say Muhammad is a liar. Read the Quran. Okay, we read the Quran, guys. This guy he don't want read the Quran. Forget about Muhammad. Muhammad is an idiot. Is is, is the Quran is better? Isn't it the Quran says kill the Christians and the Jews wherever you find them until they pay the jizya, or they convert to Islam? Now he will say to me, "Don't read the Quran. Why are you are reading the Quran? Forget about the Quran." So what we will read next? Mickey Mouse. Isn't it the Quran even says that non-Muslims are dirty? They are nudges, they are filthy. 
What kind of religion says a human being just because he's not from my religion? He's a filthy imagine I say I make a sign says Muslims are filthy and don't make them enter the road The Muslim they say that in South Africa the white man he was discriminating the black man He don't allow him to go in the same bus Well, you do that the whole city have have zero Christians zero zero Jews zero Hindus only Muslims why because you are dirty Are you going to say to me the Quran is lying now? Kill the Christians, kill the Jews, and anyone who don't believe in Allah, unless they acknowledge the truth, which is Muhammad. Either they pay the jizya or they die. What you will say now? Go back to the hadith. You don't like Quran. Even the Quran, by the way, says you can't even take your father and your brother as a friends if they aren't Muslims. If you go to chapter 9, verse 23, and here we go, that's your translation. Even your parents, they are your enemy. I feel sorry for those you know there's many people by the way they are Muslims but they don't know I mean it's time in peace they, they, they heard that in TV they saw that in the newspaper they saw that in the Facebook what peace go and say one word against the Prophet in Saudi Arabia let's see how much peace they will give you peace all over we will be hmm it's time is peace to the point if somebody he made a statement in Twitter they took him and they throw him from the top of the fourth fourth floor and this is in a university in Bangladesh I think and the police is watching so my friend they try to say things but the story is a different story don't forget to watch the video we made today previously before this video a few hours ago so you might learn a lot of things this video is mostly about politics as you see and we just wanted to share with you some my opinion and you don't have to agree with me about what's happening in Turkey and what's happening in Islamic world. now for sure everyone have his own opinion and everyone he have his own observation for things for me always me coming from the Middle East helped me to see things differently from maybe most of you because we experience different stories you know you don't know the Middle East you you see it from TV we are the Middle East and there's a huge difference between somebody like like me when I came to America first time uh, You know like at that time there was no internet etc so like people they call me from the Middle East they said to me do you see shooting in the street do you see women they are wearing no clothes washing cars with their boobs why because there was a movie made by I don't know by who promoted very much by anti-american uh, propaganda it's called this is America I think it's made by Iran this is America in this movie this is America you, you don't you don't wash your car by your hands American women they are always naked and they wash it to you by their breast and then when they call me did you wash your car by women breast or not yet I say I did not see any women breast in the street nowhere do people shoot each other in the street uh, no uh, they you know they imagine America is what they see in American movie like Sylvester Stallone going over the highway and shooting and 20 cars left right and 20 cars they you know and the, I mean this is America so at that time if you ask me about America I will give you that image because this is what I thought America is but I was smarter than you know I mean I'm not believing this but and somehow they made me believe that America is really crazy but when I came here I found that what they say about America is not what they what America is about. In in the Middle East, it's easier to get women from getting women in in America, a lot easier. 
in the Middle East you can do everything illegal a lot easier as actually there everything is illegal the computer is illegal you can get any software you want for less than a dollar any software but what they tell you about a country you never been there is different from what it is and if you want to learn about the Middle East don't learn about it from what they say to you in a newspaper or somebody who work in Dubai 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 is a fake image of the Middle East anyone remember the video when somebody accused by the brother of the Prince of Dubai that he stole money from him he was a Pakistani anyone saw the video the prince was putting salt in his anus beating him with nails going over him by his car this is was taped so imagine if you have a problem in Dubai with somebody is important what will happen to you you can search it it's there Always remember, and you always have two images. An image somebody wants you to see, and a true image. Like the Palestinian when they make news against Israel. Like I saw yesterday, uh, 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 and the news says, Israeli soldiers arrested two donkeys. I mean, you look what, Israeli soldiers arrested a donkey. Donkeys are coming to their post they will they have to get rid of them so the the soldiers they get those donkeys and they take them away hey here we go so israeli soldiers arresting donkeys and the news is all over israeli soldiers arresting two donkeys so now if i see a donkey in my yard and i hold him from his leech i'm arresting him and then they will say christian prince is arresting a donkey because this is what they want you to believe that those israeli those jews are unjust even donkeys are arresting them brother i mean a donkey now, did you ask yourself why the title is like that? Let me let me see if I can find you the news just to show you I'm not making things up. You know, it might be funny, hard to believe, but yeah, that's what the news says to you. Israeli soldier. Here we go. Do you see it? Israeli forces arrest a donkey in Jerusalem. And look, this is all over the news. I mean, and actually, the funny, I saw that yesterday, but yet this is news from 2017, which means they are repeating the same news. <laughs> I mean, imagine how the propaganda go beyond imagination just to to put somebody down. Somebody he hate the Jews. So what we would do? Let us let us let us blame the Jews for anything. In the Middle East, we have a tradition. Anything happened to us, we blame the Jews. If you ask the government why we don't have electricity, we have a war with the Jews. What's wrong with you? Okay, why we don't have jobs? We have war with the Jews. What's wrong with you? why our street is dirty why we have tons of holes in the street why we cannot walk safely in the street because we have war with the jews what's wrong with you if a guy he could not have sex with his wife in the middle east he blamed the jews his penis is not working because of the jews he is so stressed brother how i'm going to have sex with my wife and i see this in news brother they blame the jews for anything and actually, this is the culture they inherited from Muhammad. If you remember, Muhammad, he said, if not the Jews, no meat or food will decay. The reason we have refrigerator today is because of the Jews. 
Do you see it? The prophet said, Where is not Bani Israel, which means the children of Israel, meat would not decay. And you are asking me why everything is upside down. The meat is not is will meat will not decay if there's no Jews. What this man is saying simply he's trying to make you believe that the Jews are bacteria. Is that correct? This is what he's saying, and this is absolutely evil. And yet they say to you, Islam is peace. Imagine if I say the same, but about the Muslims. I will be in court tomorrow. The funny, all news agencies, by the way, speak against Israel that they are the occupation. Even Western agency, they call them the occupation. But the fact, this is not, they are not the occupation. We are the occupation. We are the Arab. We are the occupation. We are the one who took the land from the Jews. What occupation? The first time an Arab person he enter into Jerusalem is in the seventh century. Before that, nobody even speak Arabic. More than 200 years after, 250 years after, they start forcing people even to speak Arabic, which means until not long time ago, people, they speak no Arabic there. Nobody speak Arabic. But if you watch news agencies, they will say to you that the, the Israeli occupation, what occupation? This is their land. Where Jesus was baptized. Jesus was baptized in the land of the Arab. <laughs> Hello. And if you are a Christian and you believe that this is not the land of the Jews, you are going against your Bible. And you are going against Jesus too. Because all the history in the Bible presented clearly that this is the land of the Jews. That's mean you are a big fat hypocrite. From the first page to the last page, all of it confirm that this is the land of the Jews but you know always we are victims of what we learn and what we learn sometimes have nothing to do with the truth when I was in school I asked a teacher a question I said who is the one who built Jerusalem he said, according to history, Islamic history, it was David and Suleiman. I said, and David and Suleiman, they are Jews? He said, yes. I laugh and said, no. Two hours, the idiot, he's saying to us that the Jews, they took our land. Two hours. Speaking about the Kuffar, the Jews, they took our land. I got him busted. In, in, in a, I did not even say anything. I just asked him. Who is the one who built this city according to history? Is according to Islamic history the one who built it is David and Sulaiman. Sulaiman in Arabic is Solomon. And I said, Is David and Solomon they are Jews? He said, Yes. I mean, look at this idiot. All this time is making a speech that the Jews they took our land, and now you are the one who just said that the one who built that city is two Jews. How we took their land, and they are the one who built it. Most of Arab and the Middle Eastern, even Christians, they are copy paste. You know, copy paste. Nobody want to read. Nobody want to study. Nobody want to ask questions. Ask no questions. Even the Quran in chapter 5, 101, it says, ask no questions. And the Quran, he made that for a reason. Because if you ask questions, you leave Islam. You became smart. You are not allowed to be smart. Stay donkey. We are going to give you a degree, and you will graduate as a professional donkey, not as a professional smart person. Have you ever heard of a prophet he forbid people from asking questions?
So don't be like those fool who believe in ask no questions. Ask questions and try to find the answer for them by your own way. And you know, today we are really uh, lucky that you know we have the like when I was I don't know how many of you uh, uh, you know remember. At least for me, when I was in the Middle East, and even actually when I came to America, there was no internet anyway. I used to walk almost an hour to go an hour to come back, if not more sometime, depending on which library I'm going to, just to read a book. Now you have the internet, you sit in your home, in your bed, and you make two keyword search and you find thousands of articles to read videos to watch about science about space I mean it's amazing in our time to seek knowledge it's very costly very harsh it's not easy today you are lucky look at us I am here in the state and many of you are from around the earth and we are in one chat room and you hear me in the same second I say something that's amazing we don't have that luxury but yet I noticed that today's generation are very foolish I mean with all the opportunity to learn we are not learning people are spending their time watching games playing games you will see a guy he is 35 years old he spent his day playing games okay that's it this is the target of life to play game play game no problem you see I'm not against people to have fun by the way but we should have give food to our heart, to our to our brain. A brain, if you don't use it, you know, it's not going to grow. It's like a brain is like a tree. The more you pump information inside, it, the more it's, it's going to grow. Why you want your brain to stay small? There's a guy. His name is Mike Dice. I don't know if you know him. I saw him in YouTube. I saw his videos. He asked in in California. He asked people the Fourth of July. What is that? They don't know. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupidity like this? A person who was born in America all his life, he do not know what the 4th of July. How, how we reached that point. They asked him, what is the name of the president? The last president. What is the name? I mean, they asked him a question you can't even believe. They don't know. What is the capital of California? They don't know. Ask them a question about marijuana. They knew the price, where you can find it, where how to smoke it, where you can buy the pipe for it. Those are important things. This is what they want of your kids to be. They want them to be the same as Islam. Uh, uh, let me show you this guy. His name is Ali Tariq. Guys, do you want to show you how, how you can get the Muslim busted? Show you how stupid the Muslims when they say something about Jesus? Let me read this for you. Ali Tariq is saying, there was two Jesus at the trial even the Bible confirmed this and the Quran says they confer they, they uh, uh, you want to say crucified the one who is not the Messiah do you want me to show you that you are a liar do you want me to show you uh, let, let me show you first of all in the Bible it says clearly the ruler he said which want me which one you want me to, fr to to free for you the one his name you call him the Messiah or the other one they said the one who claimed to be the Messiah why you are a liar? Secondly, look what your Quran says, and I will show you in the screen so everybody will laugh at you. You are claiming in the Bible that the Jews did not they free Jesus, right? They free Jesus, the true Jesus. Look what the Quran says. Proving that you are a liar like your prophet. They said, who? The Jews. We killed the Christ. They killed who? They did not kill Jesus only. They killed the Christ. Do you see it, Abdul? 
Is the other one his name is Christ too? We killed the Christ. Jesus, the son of Mary. The other one, his name is too, is Jesus, the son of Mary. And he is the messenger of Allah. And yet you are saying to me that the Jews, they free the other one. Stupidity is amazing. And then look what Allah says. Allah, he made him appear to be like that. He did not make someone have the same name. He made him appear. All the Muslims believe that Allah, he made someone look exact like Jesus, which means your Quran confirm that the people, they saw someone look exactly like Jesus, your liar. That's mean he's Jesus. If I witness an execution of somebody and he look exact like Jesus, he have the eyes of Jesus, the face of Jesus, and he say, I am Jesus. The look of Jesus, the hair of Jesus, and then you tell me that this is not Jesus. Either you are stupid or you don't have eyes. So the Quran confirmed that he, Allah, he made it appear to them, which means Allah is a deceiver and he's a liar. Which means they are honest and they are saying the truth because they said what they did and what they saw. And the Quran confirmed that it was made to appear to them. If somebody, if Allah deceived me and made me see Jesus on the cross, it is the fault of who? Is the fault of the deceiver who made me see that? Abdul, do you see how we make barbecue of your religion? You're a prophet is a fraud. And how somebody came 600 years of, after Jesus. He never met Jesus. He never speak the language of Jesus. He never been even in Jerusalem. And yet, he is witnessing to what happened to Jesus. And the funny, the Abdul, they say to you, how you accept the book of John and the book of John written 60 years after Jesus? 600 years he came. And not only that, the Quran they have today is written more than 400 years after he came, which means after Muhammad came, which means after more than a thousand years of Jesus. Are you there, Ali Tariq? I hope you are not suffering from some pain or something. Even your Quran getting you busted. There was two Jesus or one Jesus there? You know, first time I heard Chinese, actually, I, 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 I was reading a book, and I like this statement that Chinese, they say, he left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. And I'm sure now the Chinese were talking about who? He left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. How you can make a donkey a horse? It's impossible. Unless you are Allah. And by the way, as long as we are talking about donkeys and horses, do you know that Allah, he think that he created the mule? Since when the mule is a created? Allah, he said he created everything in bear. Everything in bears, which means two, 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 male and female. And then he says, he created the mule. Okay, what is the female mule? Allah created the mule. Who is the mule? He said that. How Allah, he says, he created everything in bears, male and female. And then he says he created the mule. Okay. Allah created the mule. How he created the mule? Explain to me, who's the Muslim when I say to us? And what is the female mule? Paul did not meet Jesus. Guys, did you see? I can get you busted from the Quran. Chapter 36 in the Quran says that Paul is the messenger of Jesus and the messenger of Allah. I mean, it's stupid. They are stupid. They don't know what's in their books. All Islamic scholars, they say that Paul is one of the most powerful messengers of Allah. Donkeys in, donkeys out. How you can make a person who left as a donkey, he come back as a horse. Copy, paste. They keep attacking Paul, but they do not know that every single Muslim scholar book, they praise Paul. 
they are copy paste of Zach and Nike and the that and the donkeys but nobody will read his book this your books your donkey it's your book saying that Paul is the messenger of Allah in the same time he is a messenger of Jesus which means the Muslims agree that Jesus must be God because how God accept that Jesus sent messengers in his name this is your Quran your donkey copy paste and look he will post something else you know they jump like monkeys it's like you have to chase the rat you know like from a corner to a corner to a corner now we answer him about Paul he will he will he, he will change the topic he don't want to talk about it he talk about Jesus he don't he want to talk about, you get them busted uh, they, they, they they throw something else <laughs> my friend We knew all the colors of the underwears of your prophet, including the one he accused that he stole it. So don't go there. All his laundry, we have it. Have you ever heard of a prophet? He stole an underwear. And his, his followers accuse him of stealing underwear. And he is the best of mankind. The best of mankind was accused of his sin underwear. By who? By the Jews? No. By the Christians? No. By the Hindus? No. By the Muslims. And by the way, until now, this underwear is missing, just to be honest with you. Until now, no FBI, no CIA. Until now, this underwear is missing. And if you find it, please let me know. We can say it for a lot of money. I mean, have you ever heard of a God? He sent a message saying it's not Muhammad who took the underwear, but he don't tell us where the underwear is. Obviously, it's Muhammad who took it. Because if Allah is God and he knew who is the one who took the real thief, he should tell us who is the one who took it. It's not enough to say to me, it's not Muhammad who took it. And the funny, it's a red underwear. If you bring uh, uh, Detective Columbus, he can find it. Colombo, what is his name? Colombo? Let us call Colombo. He will find uh, uh, one, more, one more question. He go there, he ask one more question. Uh, uh, one more thing, I remember this. I, I have a question. Allah God, he could not find who took the underwear. It's obvious, it's Muhammad and he's wearing it. Because if it's not Muhammad, Allah will say, if he is true God, he will say, okay, go to this house, the house of this guy. Who is the one who took it? Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. Uh, please don't forget to watch the video previous to this one. It's more important. And this one just about politics. And we end talking about Islam as usual. Anyway, like even from the beginning, even though we are speaking about politics, as you know, Islam is politics. Islam is not really meant to be a religion. Islam is an organization, power-seeking, money-seeking, sex-seeking. It's about sex and money and power. It's not about God. Never was, never been, and never will be. That's what Islam is about. If you pray to Allah, He will increase the size of your penis. He will give you a bracelet. He will make you control 80,000 slaves. Power and sex and food. Allah is not God, He's never exist. Islam is about dominating, controlling government, it's not about spiritual and belief. Islam is about enforcing rules, which is have nothing to do with you. You don't believe in it, but still they will force you to do it because it's a dictatorship. Islam is about fascism. This is why Muhammad he said, and we showed you in the hadith, where he said that the best of mankind. Is the Muslims why because they will bring you they will bring them and the chains around their necks that is the duty of a Muslim the best of Muslims is the one who go and slave people put chains around their necks and they humiliate them and they force them into converting to Islam that is Islam my friend is not what they say to you in the fake news agencies it is what you see in the front of your eyes 
ISIS are not bad Muslims. They are the best of Islam. The bad Muslim is the one who don't carry jihad. This is what Islam teach. The good Muslim is the one, is the one who do what Muhammad did. Name for me one thing ISIS did and Muhammad did not do. Actually, I confirm to you, and I am I stand behind my words, that ISIS is one thousand times more merciful and nicer than Muhammad, and we can prove it easy. Don't make them fool you, my friend. Thank you very much for being here. And enter, we'll see you soon again. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon again. Bye-bye. Take care.